In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. God forbid that I should glory. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with thy help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby thou hast given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee. Because by thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests with the elders and scribes and the whole council held a consultation, and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And they all condemned him and said, he deserves to die. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. Then he handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. God spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Let us pray. Grant, we beseech thee, almighty God, that we, who for our evil deeds do worthily deserve to be punished, by the comfort of thy grace may mercifully be relieved through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee. Because by thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. Jesus went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. Like a lamb, he was led to the slaughter. And like a sheep that before its shearers is mute, so he opened not his mouth. Worthy is the lamb who is slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. For the transgression of his people was he stricken. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The third station. Jesus falls the first time. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee. Because by thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God. Surely he hath borne our griefs. And he carried our sorrows. Let us pray. O oh God, who knowest us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers, that by reason of frailty of our nature we cannot always stand upright, grant to us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For his people sins just times The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee. Because by thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. To what can I liken you? To what can I compare you, O daughter of Jerusalem? What likeness can I use to comfort you, O virgin daughter of Zion? For vast as the sea is your ruin. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. A sword shall pierce through my own soul also. That the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel. So by his cross and passion, we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The fifth station, the cross is laid upon Simon of Cyrene. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee. Because by thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. As they led Jesus away, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son did overcome death for our salvation, Mercifully grant that we who have his glorious passion in remembrance may take up our cross daily and follow him. Through the same, thy son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The sixth station. A woman wipes the face of Jesus. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee. Because, because by, by that holy, holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. We have seen him without beauty or majesty, with no looks to attract our eyes. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. 
And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. His appearance was so marred beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the children of men. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Show us the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of thine only begotten Son didst reveal his glory upon the holy mount, grant unto us thy servants that in faith, beholding the light of his countenance, we may be strengthened to bear the cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. To the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 The seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee. Because by thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. But as for me, I am a worm and no man. A very scorn of men and the outcast of my people. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who of thy tender love towards mankind has sent thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The eighth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee. Because by thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. There followed after Jesus a great multitude of the people, and among them were women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let me mourn, O Lord, beside thee, for the sins which crucified me. The ninth station, Jesus falls a third time. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee. Because by thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. I am the man who has seen affliction under the rod of his wrath. He has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. He has besieged me and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. 
He has made me dwell in darkness like the dead of long ago. Though I call and cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. Remember, O Lord, my affliction and bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so he opened not his mouth. Let us pray. Keep, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy church with thy perpetual mercy. And because the frailty of man without thee cannot but fall, keep us ever by thy help from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee. Because by thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. When they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mingled with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And they divided his garments among them by casting lots. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, they divided my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. They gave me gall to eat. And when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. Let us pray. O Lord God, whose blessed Son our Savior gave his back to the smiters and did not face, did not, and hid not his face from shame. Grant us grace to take joyfully the sufferings of the present time, in full assurance of the glory that shall be revealed. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The 11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee. Because by thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. When they came to the place which is called the skull, there they crucified him. And with him they crucified two criminals, one on the right, the other on the left, and Jesus between them. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, he was numbered with the transgressors. I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. Let us pray. O God, who by the passion of thy blessed Son hast made the instrument of shameful death to be unto us the means of life and peace. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The twelfth station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee. Because by thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And when Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And then crying with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he bowed his head and handed over his spirit.
Christ, for our sake, became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption didst give thine only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection hast delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily from sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection, through the same thy Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The thirteenth station. The body of Jesus is placed in the arms of his mother. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee. Because by thy holy cross thou hast hast redeemed the world. All you who pass by, behold and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow. My eyes are spent with weeping, my soul is in tumult. My heart is poured out in grief because of the downfall of my people. Do not call me Naomi, which means pleasant. Call me Mara, which means bitter, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Her tears are on her cheeks. She hath none to comfort her. Let us pray. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people a pardon and peace that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The 14th station. Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee. Because by thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock and he rolled a giant stone to the door of the tomb. Thou shalt not leave my soul in hell, neither shalt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that as we are baptized into the death of thy blessed Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, So by continual mortifying our corrupt affections, we may be buried with him, and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass to our joyful resurrection for his merits who died and was buried and rose again for us, the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Savior of the world, who by thy cross and precious blood hast redeemed us. Save us and help us, we humbly beseech thee, O Lord. Let us pray. Almighty Father, who hast given thine only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification, grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve thee in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests, unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
mighty is the mighty. Blessed be our God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray thee graciously to behold this thy family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God forever and ever. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. 
He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there are many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. But he was wounded for our tra- Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord laid up, has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Together, Psalm 22. (coughs) My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry? and from the words of my distress. O my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all people, by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let me deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of passion surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a pot shirt. My tongue sits to the strict And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in. Hangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. 
I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line give glory. For he does not despise or abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to them, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nation shall bow before him. For Egypt belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep and bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The Holy Spirit testifies, saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds, he also adds. I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief of the priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, whom are you looking for? And they answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he, so if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. 
Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was with the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of the men's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him, bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers be would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born. And for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was abandoned. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to him, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. 
So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it has been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king, they cried out. Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture. I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath especially because the Sabbath was a day, a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified man broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. 
And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, the tomb was nearby. They laid Jesus there. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Please be seated. Today we stand at the foot of the cross, looking up at the misery of our Savior nailed there. The power and the sanctity of this moment, of our knowledge of what Jesus endured for us, is overwhelming and oppressive. We don't know what to do with this moment. We don't know how to endure it, how to embrace it, how to feel guilty, how to feel appreciation, nor how to understand it. We only know that it hurts. It makes us sad. It seems illogical and yet somehow becomes the miracle of our salvation story. Today we stand at the foot of the cross and we wonder who we are in relation to it all why God would send his son to die for us. Between our most recent stations of the cross, which we just offered before this service, and our gospel passage today, the scripture from last evening and the dramatic reading from Palm Sunday, we know and hear of many characters who witnessed Jesus' death and crucifixion. Let me name a few. As I do so, please think about how each of these people might have felt about Jesus. What was their stake in his crucifixion? The 12 disciples, especially Peter and Judas in their respective roles. The soldiers, the officers, the Jewish police who come to arrest Jesus in the garden. Malchus the high priest's slave whose ear was cut off and then healed by Jesus. The chief priests themselves. <coughs> Annas, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, and Caiaphas, the high priest. The accusers the servant girl, the slaves, and the police who confront Peter, providing him an opportunity to deny Jesus three times. Pontius Pilate. Barabbas, the bandit who was freed instead of Jesus. The men, the men who tortured, mocked, walked Jesus to Golgotha, hung him on the cross, offered him vinegar and gall, pierced his side, took him down. Simon of Cyrene, who helped carry Jesus' cross. Mary, the mother of Jesus. The two men who were crucified, crucified on Jesus' left and Jesus is right. The other female followers who witnessed his crucifixion in terror. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. 
the guards at the tomb. You, and you, and you, and me. Those last names, the you and you and you and me, are the most important to us today. Who are we in relation to this difficult day? Who are we to even witness this crucifixion safely and comfortably in this beautiful church? Who are we that Jesus willingly died for us to save us? Well, we're God's beloved. We're created by his very hand, purely for his pleasure and affection. We're also God's wretched, full of sin at every turn and completely unappreciative of his benevolence and generosity. We're God's chosen, rescued time and time and time again from our own failings and from our own inability to keep ourselves out of trouble. We are God's treasure, considered deeply in each moment of Jesus' betrayal. When I come to this Good Friday, to this moment of crucifixion and death, I sometimes reflect upon the myriad of treacheries that Jesus experienced on his way to the cross. It wasn't just one betrayal. And I wonder, selfishly, if my very name, if my image, if my spirit was on his heart as he bore the weight of each of those betrayals. I don't do this to elevate my importance. I do this to set straight in my mind how infinitely capable of love Jesus was and Jesus is, even in his very darkest moments. I consider this to remind myself of how he did this for someone as inconsequential to the world as me. Was he thinking, I do this because I'm going to love Michelle, when he offered himself to the soldiers at the Garden of Gethsemane? Did he think, I love Chad enough to bear this when he endured the questions of Annas and Caiaphas? Was he remembering how much he loved Sophia when Pilate interrogated him and when his own people demanded his death? Did he think Joel is so worthy of being loved that when that crown of thorns was placed on his head, he didn't even think twice? Was he remembering how much he loved Jean when they nailed him to that cross? I don't know. We won't know till we get to heaven. But as we leave here today, going about the business of our lives, we carry with us the knowledge of his sacrifice and the tragedy of his death. We leave this service, this funeral service, as mourners missing our deceased Jesus. We leave here not understanding what has happened, and we certainly don't really have the foresight to comprehend what could happen next. We leave here only knowing he did this for us. So I end this sermon with the same question from the beginning. Why would God send his only son to die for us all? As you ponder Jesus' death, may you be filled with just the answer you need to hear so that you may return on Easter morning ready to celebrate his resurrection. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.
Dear people of God, our Heavenly Father sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, that all who believe in him might be delivered from the power of sin and death and become heirs with him of everlasting life. We pray, therefore, for people everywhere according to their needs. Let us pray for the Holy Catholic Church of Christ throughout the world, for its unity and witness and service, for all bishops and other ministers and the people whom they serve, for Douglas, our bishop, and all the people of this diocese, for the Christians in this community, for those about to be baptized, that God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve thee through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for all nations and peoples of the earth and for those in authority among them for Joe, the President of the United States, for the Congress and the Supreme Court, for the members and representatives of the United Nations, for all who serve the common good, that by God's help they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. Almighty God, kindle we pray in every heart the true love of peace, and guide with thy wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility thy dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of thy love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body or in mind, for the hungry and the homeless, the destitute and the oppressed, for the sick the wounded and the crippled, for those in loneliness, fear and anguish, for those who face temptation, doubt and despair, for the sorrowful and bereaved, for prisoners and captives and those in mortal danger, that God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of his love and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Let us pray for all who have not received the gospel of Christ, for those who have never heard the word of salvation, for those who have lost their faith, for those hardened by sin or indifference, for the contemptuous and the scornful, for those who are enemies of the cross of Christ and persecutors of his disciples, for those who in the name of Christ have persecuted others, that God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience. Merciful God, creator of all the peoples of the earth and lover of souls, have compassion on all who do not, do not know thee as thou art revealed in thy Son, Jesus Christ. Let the gospel be preached with grace and power to those who have not heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resist it and bring home to thy fold those who have gone astray, that there may be one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us commit ourselves to God and pray for the grace of a holy life, that with all those who have departed this world and have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of the joy of our Lord and receive the crown of life in the day of resurrection. worship.
This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, Come let us worship.
because by the holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee, because by the holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. O Savior of the world, who by thy cross and precious blood hast redeemed us. Save us and help us, we humbly beseech thee, O Lord. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today we offer communion from the reserved sacrament, uh, from what we consecrated and kept at the altar of repose last evening. 
as is our custom in the Episcopal Church on Good Friday, we will consume all of the consecrated um, host and wine. And then our tabernacle will remain empty until Easter morning when we consecrate new afresh on that glorious resurrection day. Today we are offering communion of both kinds, but we are only offering the common cup. So if you'd like to receive only one or the other, you are welcome to do so. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Gluten free. Mm -hmm. Very close. Thank you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, set, we pray thee, thy passion, cross, and death between thy judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead, to thy holy church, peace and concord, and to us sinners, everlasting life and glory. For the Father and the Holy Spirit, thou livest and reignest, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.